Good afternoon, everyone. Depending on where you are joining us from, um, welcome to our first coaching education Thank webinar. I hope everyone is, is safe. And uh, oh, Delco is Kwame following up uh, yeah. guidelines from, from this, uh, the WHO and, and the government and, and keeping safe and healthy. Um, before we, we get started with the webinar, please make sure your mute uh, or your mic stay on mute. So that way we can all hear the presentation uh, from a while here. Um, at the end, we would open it up for, for Q&A. Um, should you have any, I'm sure uh, I, I will, we'll have some time for us to, to answer a few questions. Um, so just make sure you stay mute there. Um, so very privileged to have uh, Awal come in with us. Awal is the performance analyst at white to dream Academy in Ghana. Um, and he's going to take us, uh, give us an insight into how they use their performance analysis and developing their players and the team. Um, that's why to dream. Uh, the presentation would be in, in two parts. So the part one uh, is for a while to take us through his slides. And then the second session is when we would open it up for, for Q&A um, as we go. So a while if you're there, I'm going to pass it up and uh, fire us up. Yeah, um, someone from Twitter is joining as well. Yep. I, uh, uh, um, I just allowed him to join Alan Godoy. Godoy yeah, just go ahead well. and uh, go with the presentation. Okay. I'll look after the guys joining in. Um, yeah. Good afternoon. Good good uh, evening, everyone. Depending on what you're, you are. My name is uh, Awal Kamin Salifu. Uh, the head of performance analysis at Right to Dream, and uh, I'm also I I'm also the the opposition analyst for the first team as well in uh, FC Northland. But recently, I'm um, I'm taking the role of the head of academy uh, analysis going forward. Um, my my journey started as a as a as an elite footballer and. Unfortunately, my my career was plagued with injuries, we are carrying injuries, uh, to be spe specific, my Achilles. So I had to bow out the game and I played to the first division level in Ghana. And I got introduced into this uh, by a friend of mine who recently is still the performance analyst of uh, the Ghana Black Stars. So uh, hereby I present to you the my a short introductory presentation about the introdu introduction to uh, performance analysis and stats. So uh, we take it from why is my yeah. So the content is mainly about performance analysis, uh, video recordings, uh, coaching assistance, team analysis, individual and trialist analysis, elite development, and scouting how. Uh, performance analysis can be used around uh, a football setting or project or club. So, uh, so I begin with uh, what is performance analysis. So, performance analysis is uh, is providing objective information in the form of uh, video or statistical data on sporting performance that can be used to in that can be used in decision making. Um, both, and both for the player and the coach in order to improve performance. So this provides information on the data that can be fed back to coaching staff and the players to give an accurate recollection of the game and provide a deeper level of understanding. So it's, it comes down to pre-analysis pre, uh, and then post-match analysis discussion. So with the post-match and uh, match discussion, a discussion then takes place between the coach, player, and analyst. The coach, staff, or players inform the analyst what they would like to see to, to be extracted from the analysis data. So performance analysis comes in two forms, that uh, the qualitative and the quantitative analysis. So quantitative mainly is, uh, quantitative is mainly the video evidences, and the qualitative is... Uh, Quantitative is the stats and the qualitative is the video evidences. So analysis, so when I say analysis, the performance analyst then 
uh, qualitatively and, and quantitatively analyzes all the data that is collected. And like I said, qualitative analysis includes non-statistical data such as video clips and images. And the quantitative analysis includes statistics and values that can be measured. So then goes back to the feedback to players. This is given in the form of video footage or stat stats data, like I, I earlier said, and the information is delivered to the players in various ways, through team presentations and individual positions. So uh, as you can see on your screen, uh, this is a simple uh, explanation or definition of performance analysis, the provision of objective feedback to performance, trying to get a positive change in performance. So the English, uh, Institute of Sports Research said essentially it's about telling the athlete what actually happened as opposed to what they perceive to be happening. Re research shows that the average athlete uh, and coaches can only record 30% of performance correctly. Performance analysis helps them, helps with the remaining 70%. Uh, so, you can screen. This is the cycle of performance analysis. So it, it, it begins with the performance, then uh, performance where the analyst records the performance, then goes to a post-match discussion that's uh, analyzing the game, uh, that the performance to, so it's a three cycle way, the coach, the player, and the analyst. So then goes into the, the analyst, gathering all the information about the qualitative and qualitative, quantitative and quant qualitative and quantitative feedback, then fed back into the coaching staff and the players. So then we go back into training again and then perform, perform during games. So it's a cycle like it's, you can see on the screen. And so performance analysis cycle is, uh, so the concluded action, identify the problem and then what and how to measure the Measure the, uh, measure the feedback that, or the data that is collected and then evaluate the data and then communicate to, uh, to, to the players and, uh, and the coaches. So like you see, what are the next action, uh, actions um, in terms of uh, team performance, player acquisition, so it goes all into like a, a very broad, uh, broad department that helps, or um, how do I put this in? The, so I would say that that complements the the work of coaches to help them uh, identify problems and how to solve them over a period of time. So, so performance analysis that you you analyze games or Incident, incident based on key performance indexes. So they are called the KPIs. So with a central midfielder, what you can see is that, what you can see on your screen are the indicators and then the KPIs. So for a central midfielder, the, the indicators are headers and the key, uh, key performance index are like winning area duels. And when it comes to tackles, it's about ground duels, won and low tackle session, uh, interceptions, passes, uh, assist and Sorry, and then defensive passes and shots are about attacking support and all of that. And then when it comes to team, the key performance indexes can be open play goals, counter attack, uh, set plays, and playing openly. And then comes to considered goals that you considered. The key performance indexes are the open play goals that you considered, and the shots, set play goals, and final third entries. Uh, tackles and interceptions that, that were made. So with the KPIs, we have the KPIs and we have the indi indicators. So the indicators actually, uh, the key performance indexes are derived from the indica indicators that you can, what am I saying? So the KPIs are, are derived from specific indicators. So when it comes to goal scored, then you can know the KPIs for goal scored, uh, goals considered the KPIs, what you have to look to and then the shorts, final third entries, tackles, interceptions, and, and the list goes on. So this is a full video analysis process. So record performance like I showed you earlier on. Uh, 
give the footage to uh, to give the footage to the coaches and then uh, deliver. Then you go back to into coding and then analyzing the game with the individual and uh, team performance analysis. So in performance analysis, it comes down to to two main ways of analysis. Uh, that's the team analysis and individual analysis. So individual analysis is uh, uh, analyzing a performance over a period of time to help in, uh, the player improve. And the team analysis is mainly based on how to develop a team based on its principles and uh, its principles, KPIs, and uh, philosophy. So then comes to in, into tactics and all, all of that. So what are the advantages of video analysis? So it provides a visual performance, visualization of performance, adds qualitative approach to the subject opinion, immediate feedback is available. In this um, fast and then innovative age, like doing games, you can give feedbacks and even uh, doing uh, half times, you can pack up FC and that's what we actually do. So doing uh, half time, you go in there straight and then you, you can uh, give a short presentation of how the team is performing and how you can exploit the opponent. So uh, then comes comes to um, the ability to review the performance whenever applied, uh, portable. That means allows even active approach, ability to log and database information, ability to provide long, longitudinal and trend analysis. So when it comes to, of course, uh, recording films uh, and games, so it's about recording not only games, but recording training sessions as well. Because now in this, the way the game is uh, uh, growing and how innovative the game is going, sometimes as a coach, uh, you, can, you can turn a blind eye on a specific uh, training session or session that you're delivering, depending on what you're looking at. So you could be, you could be focused on defenders and then your main focus or session will be on defenders and you overlook uh, most of what the attackers are doing. So when the game it, you can actually see what the attackers did and then you can probably uh, correct them. And also it's not only just about, about uh, it just, just about football or let's say performance, but also specific physio exercises and techniques. So sometimes you can record uh, the speed, agility, and quickness sessions of uh, for the physio, so they can see the technique the players are using to run and how quick they can, how they are turning their curves and all of that, so it can um, better help them improve their running techniques uh, and their agility and all of that. So, of course, this is one of the most important important um, aspect of uh, performance analysis. So, you're you're supposed to be uh, coaching assistants. So, as a, you're not just a performance analyst seated on the laptop and breaking down games and all of that, but you are supposed to be on the on the page as a an assistant coach, so you can you can see what's going on firsthand on firsthand at training and how best you can help the team and individual uh, players. So, uh, again, after the game has been recorded, you can. Uh, give your feedback and also provide uh, games to the players. So as you can see on, on your screen, it's about provision of much DVDs, but now DVDs in this day and age are not available anymore. So everything is more of a soft copy and also coding the matches and giving feedback to coaches and player and then review and report on the match performance. Uh, identify coaching paths and trends. That's coaching path and trends literally means the KPIs or your teams philosophy or yeah your team's philosophy that you play and feedback to the coaches so when it, when i say team analysis it's about analyzing teams uh, matches using the specific uh, software that you use uh, to to create a, an in-depth performance of the team and how to improve it over a period of time and analyzing performance that's identified the team as well as opposition weakness. But here in Right to Dream, what we actually focus more on is our our development because we don't have the access to 
opposition videos and stuff that we can actually uh, analyze so we are more focused on our development as a, as a team or as an academy because we focus on the individual development and team team development so after every every game these are basic stats that we, we used to we used to collect this this is a very old one but i just thought i'll show this because we've gone past this uh, we used to we used to have a we used to have a three phases of play but now we've got since we joined forces with fcn and all that we got like phases four phases of play so this this is one of the basic stats that we used to collect back in the day so we collect the goals shots uh, shot on targets and off targets, shots block, crosses, uh, corners, attacking. How many times we enter attacking tips successfully, and the possession as well as usual. And but now, of first we used to have the defensive phase, the so the uh, defensive third, mid third, and the attacking third. But now we have defensive third, we have pre-defensive third. We have pre-attacking third and we have attacking third. Uh, so when it comes to individual and trialist analysis, uh, it's about creating cool tag individual players with the with the software that you use. We usually we for a right to do use game breaker, uh, sports tech, uh, sports uh, sports code elite uh, for entire highlights of the game, coding individuals in every match for the players to watch their performance, analyzing individual performance work rates as uh, rates as identifying individual weakness and strengths aids in creating individual player stats for, for the game and making highlight packages for, for the player as well to help improve their performances. So when I say most of you will be a little bit confused about the tags that the coding creating codes this is what a code usually uh, looks like. So with the uh, code windows as you can see on the screen from, from top to down is the formation that we are playing, 4-3-3. So you can see that we are tagging the goalkeeper's distribution and uh, his actions. Uh, we are tagging based on their performance. And on your right, you can see the bench players. And beneath the, the, the substitute, substitute players, you can see the, the co coaching areas that we look at. That depends on what we've done on uh, on that depends on what we've done during the, during the week. So that changes periodically. But what you see on the, just beneath the lineup is uh, attacking third entries. That never changes. So that's what I used to call the little data I, I showed you from here. So you can see attacking third goal shots and all of that. So I use these codes to create, uh, to collect all of this. So I, I take the our chances and opposition chances as well and our final passes and also you can see just beneath the final passes you can see basic techniques we are more focused on uh, developing our boys techniques so we we usually take inspiration from not only uh, professional players across the globe but also what we've taught our seniors that are doing to help the and 11s and the 13s know that what what they are being taught is really uh, uh, really good and very important in the aspect of the game. Um, so when I talked about the four phases, as you can see, there's a code window that talks about the four phases of play. So you can see the, uh, the, the play from the back, the build-up phase. The, so build, we have two, two, two kind of build-up. So we build up from the goalkeeper and the build-up that's having control of the game and the breakthrough phase that's um, the breakthrough phase that's um, the final pass into the final third for a goal and then the finishing phases. And then comes back to the defensive phases. We have four defensive phases as well. So we have the counter pressure. We have the finding balance. So finding balance is mainly um, when we are, we are played out of shape, we have, to, we have to get back in shape. So that's how we are, we are trying to find balance and get back in shape and defending in shape. That's the third phase, and then defending the goal. So usually we used to say defend the goal, but now we are saying defend because then it gives people, uh, players, they are the mentality of getting into the box. So now we instead of defending the goal, we go defending the box. So it's about defending the 
the box. So we leave the box area for the goalkeeper to handle. So you can see other uh, KPIs and other instances that we collect from, from this. And elite development, elite development uh, area is creating and producing specific coding system for appropriate uh, age groups to help them develop over a period of time. So let's say if uh, a player has to work on his or her heading or like a left foot, we can uh, we create a coding system to collect all those informations and both qualitative and quantitative to, to feedback into them and see how they are developing. And also uh, as much as we are focusing on their weakness, uh, it's not only focusing on the weakness, but also getting your, your strength sharper as well, because it's really, really important for you as a player to to develop not only your your weakness, but also uh, work more on your strength to get it more even stronger. And also, again, we create creating codes for areas of development for players for future progression. Um, so when I say creating codes for their development and future progression, this is what example of what uh, we, create, we, we created to create uh, to collect all these data. So as you can see, there's a player's name on the left and three or two areas of uh, development for the player. So we collect this over a period. And our right to dream, we work, we run on the on the school on the school curriculum. So it's mainly on a three months period as opposed to like seasonal uh, seasonal projects. So we run on a school curriculum and whenever the school is on break, uh, everybody's on, on break. Uh, football is on break as well. So that's that's how uh, uh, I write to them year round. So sometimes it depends on how how well you are, develop, you are developing based on the areas of development. So it could be dreams. Of course, everybody differs. So as you can see, a players uh, like Ernest Jury focusing on uh, position, decision, and pass selection and attacking the box when the ball goes wide. Jones as well. Jones was one of our players here that was very, very good with 1v1, but on his le on the left side, he wasn't that strong. So we decided to uh, develop uh, his 1v1s on the on the left line. So he's a winger. And when whenever he, he attacks, he... His uh, end product starts the crosses or passes are not really uh, consistent. So that's another area that we are looking at. So it goes down to, to sets as well. Yao Yaboa, Fafana, Amir Muntarik, Islifobi, Abdul Mumin, Suleiman, Ibrahim Sadiq, and the list goes on. So that's uh, how we try to develop players. So when when I talk about individual collecting individual player data, this is one of them. So. I'm profiling set. So set played 54 minutes. His um, total passes were 25. So this is an example. So it, it might not be really accurate, like, but this is an example that I'm giving you. So uh, short passes, you can see he, he made like 22 short passes, two were unsuccessful. And then uh, one, long, one unsuccessful long pass, then comes down to uh, his forward passing. So you can see he made only seven, seven forward passes and one unsuccessful. So this actually profiles the kind of player that he is because you can see clearly see he likes, he's, he's very comfortable with short, short passes as opposed to like uh, long passes and his, uh, he passes to the, to, to the side more as well, like the square passes as more than uh, the to the sides and then back passes than the forward passes, which we all want to develop his uh, forward passing abilities. And in the at the end of the game, he, he made one assist and then uh, three fouls. And so on the screen, S means successful and U means unsuccessful. Just to 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 be to to clarify the whole thing. So yeah. So again. This is the percentage of passing that he made, and this actually profiles the whole play. So you can see, right from this start, you could easily see that he's a, he's a he's a right footer. So all his passes, total passes, were made with his uh, with his right foot, and uh, he only did one one header which was unsuccessful. So there was no pass with the left foot. And when I talk about scouting. Um, 
when I talk about scouting, we we as an, an, an analyst or so analyst department uh, help with uh, creating benchmarks for trial list. So let's say we can create a, a database based qualitatively and quantitatively to, to better give a, a fair assessment to incoming trialists so they can uh, probably uh, get uh, the best judgment out during trials because then uh, we, we have a benchmark or a typical or let's say the player methodology that we have in relation to like uh, position. So they, when we talk about midfield, we have the kind of play, the quite kind of qualities that we, we require from from midfielders, attackers, defenders, and all of that. So we help recording matches and then filming tri trialist games and trainings as well. Because sometimes when you focus more on the games, you're you're more biased on uh, how the player trains and all of that. So we are not only looking at just his games, but also seeing the potential he has doing trainings and all of that. And also we, we do scout professional leagues, tournaments and, and so on and so forth. So simple software that we can use. And after this, I, I, will, I will send uh, you know, uh, very cheap or accessible uh, softwares and and cameras that you can you can use given the, our area with uh, challenges in terms of funding and all of that so uh, of course an uh, hd camera is needed uh, softwares there are so many analysis softwares up there uh, we have the sports code by huddle uh, we have uh, focus x2 we have the longo match sony vegas we have that prozone now it's not it's not it's now called stats, but they don't really have a soft. They have, I need to delve more into this because Prozone used to have a software for collect. That's more quali uh, uh, quantitative analysis software, and then now Naxport. And back in the days, we used to use DVD duplicators, which are not used anymore. Network server filming area. So a network server is mainly for a, a, a very bigger project. So let's say a bigger club that uh, can set up a server for all data to be to be easily assessed on network server without uh, any challenges so like uh, when you go into europe there's this network servers where, where everything goes on and now huddle has got a, a platform where all videos go in there you can have access to to your through your phone um ipads or whatever so and they have apps and also a film in the area, that's one challenge here in, in Ghana as well. Uh, back at right we had, no, like the early days, I had this challenge some uh, along the line as well, where I used to film on, uh, on, uh, on uh, what's the name? It's like, uh, uh, yeah, it's, it's, this platform used for building, so yeah, scaffolds, yeah, scaffold, that's the word. So scaffolds, and that's one challenge that we we, we are gonna go um, back here in Ghana. So it's about getting the height to be able to properly get, uh, uh, get, get this, uh, a wider view of what's going on, and it really helps in analysis. Uh, so there's a case of what I wanted to show you, but unfortunately, I think, uh, I'll have to show my, change the screen to to that. So now I think it's much more better now, right? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, the quality is much better now. So so this is a possible, predicting your possible lineups, as you can see me predicting the possible lineups, and this is the offensive game. Um, so the wingers, they get, Wingers get in, so one inside passes plus flicks close. So we have to close their passing lines and anticipate. That's my the the solution to that. So you can see from the from the video, they they always go long and then try to flick and then attack from attack the spaces that that's created. So this video is uh self-explanatory with the telestration so you can properly see what I'm trying to say. 
So wingers again. So we our wingers have to get in. Yeah. So uh, can you hear me? Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, we were we were right here. Um so again the two center backs as one midfielder, that's how they build up. So as you can see, the two center backs right there. And the one midfielder, and these are the fullbacks. You can see my cases, right? Yeah. My cases, yeah. So these are their fullbacks. They go so wide, so high, and that's how they build up. So this is collected from data from about seven to eight games that, that you've watched. So you can see the the pattern of play and how they, they play. So it won't be like just from one game because um, uh, everybody has a different tactics and how, how to play. So you can probably see how, what their style of play is all about rather than as opposed to just one, one game and then you decide that that's a, that's a disaster because uh, teams can change. So as you can see, that's the link up play that I, I spoke about. And again, yeah, a long, long, long balls or long passes uh, kind of team, and they are very good at this. And they create. So this is yeah, their defensive game. <sighs> so this is no cruel. This is no cruel <laughs> uh, Yeah. So they play too high. So I was advising that we we, we send chip balls in in behind for. So we can attack them. So we can see they are so high, and with the telestrations makes it easier. So when you send chip balls into the house spaces or outside spaces or wide spaces, we can easily penetrate them. And again, you can see they are so wide again. So it's about getting balls into the house space and then penetrating them. Again, you can see in this they are so wide. So again, another chip ball into the wide areas or the chip, uh, the half spaces, so we can prop get uh, break through them and then finish. Another chip ball. So this is what uh, opposition analysis is all about, about giving accurate information to your, to your team to better prepare for, for, the, for the game ahead and also uh, see how you can exploit them. So it gives you a, a marginal gain over, over your opponents. And this is one thing that it's lacking here in uh, this part of the world because people are not really... Uh, more focused or more interested in in uh, in investing or getting building a performance analysis department. And uh, people, excuse my excuse me, but the truth is, people would rather uh, kill goats and cows as opposed to building a, uh, hoping hoping to win from killing the cow and building a cow. So that's that's uh, one of the examples that I've shown you right there. So yeah, so that was that's my simple case study that I wanted to talk about. So uh, in this uh, concludes my my introductory into or my introduction into uh, performance analysis is that uh, to give you a, a just, just a fair idea of what performance analysis is all about and how important it is and what it adds to, to, uh, to a team. And also, uh, 
great stuff. Yeah, who are really interested in in this as well to to also uh, know what to do and uh, how to get get into performance analysis. That's that's uh, my simple presentation. And thank you everyone for joining. And uh, it was it was really good for me. To, uh, it was really it was an honor to to share my little uh, knowledge that I have about analysis with with you guys. Great stuff, a while. Uh, let's open it up with uh, some questions. Um, I'll go first. Yeah. So based on on the video you just showed us, um, you did mention that you you look at maybe seven to eight games uh, for you to get a proper analysis of a team. Um, once you gather all that information from those games, how much of it do you show to the players um, as preparation towards the game? So the most important parts that we show to the, to the players are uh, the obvious or I would say the obvious or the, the parts or trends that they, they've displayed. So it's mainly their way of playing in regard, uh, regardless of what, whatever position that they are playing. I hope you, are, you understand what I mean. Yeah. So their past, not like old, old ones, but their recent past, uh, recent or past, past recent seven or seven to eight games. And fortunately there is uh, platforms that helps. Uh, this makes this much easier so you can actually collect uh, information on on attacking phases and defensive phases and you you relay this information uh, to the team so it's more it's more um, more 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 how do I put this uh, like uh, yeah. digitized or more in in the form of their defense of play and yeah. inside of play and then we show their uh, transition moment you mean the pieces which are very very important as well yeah. so we show the defensive side of play uh, and attacking side of play so we show how how they concede their goals how how they how they uh, so we don't show every information from uh, from all the games but we pick one best example that explains what we are the message that we are trying to uh, relay to to the to the team. I hope you get what I mean. Yeah. So so roughly, let's say you're having a team meeting today, uh, trying to prepare your group for the game this weekend. How how long would that team meeting last for? If you have to show all this video with with the information, um, it should last. Team meeting sh shouldn't be more than uh maximum should be like 20 minutes it shouldn't be even more than 20 minutes so it's just very very short like 10 to 15 minutes you're done okay and then during uh during the course of the week as well so do you show them uh, some of the videos as so, well uh, everybody has a different con uh, attention and concentration span and yeah. the more the longer it gets the boring or most people gets uh, lose the vital information that that's being given. Yeah. And do you do that just? Uh, does that answer your question? Yeah, yeah it does. It does. Um, most important, the concentration. So uh, the the follow up question is: uh, within the course of the week, do you do that just once, or do you do it on separate occasions uh, leading up to the game? Hello. Yeah. Can you hear me? Hello. Can yeah. You, can anybody hear me? Yes. Can you hear me? Uh, well, can you hear me? Can anybody hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Can you hear Hello? me? Can you hear us? Yeah, I can hear you. Can you hear me? Yeah. yeah. Are you there? Yeah, so wow, we can hear you. Okay, yeah. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Can you hear yeah. me? Yeah. Okay, good. So my, my follow-up question uh, was leading up to the game within the course of the week, 
uh, when it comes to presenting to the players? Do you do that once? And if so, when is the best day to do that? Or do you do that on separate days to build up to the game? So um, sometimes it really depends on uh, the message or the content that you want to you want to give out there. Because let's say if it's a broad, a very big uh, topic that you, you'd want to touch on and different broad topic, which has different, uh, say it's, it has a, an attacking side and a defensive side. You'd rather focus, like, uh, share it into so uh, into two 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 bits. So you could probably do right one right after after the uh, that's the next day or probably the the next before before the next thing. You just show the clip to them and then go into training to to do that and then later maybe during the day. But it's mainly mainly depends on uh, on you the coach and and your schedule honestly but it, it's always fresh when it's right after the game so you can see first hand about what to do and then what what to improve on gotcha good uh, uh anybody else uh with the question yeah go ahead unmute yourself uh by me. okay so um th that's that was a very good presentation oh, wow i really enjoyed it um my first question, I actually have two questions. My first question, um, you indicated that you collect both qualitative and quantitative data. Um, one thing I've realized is that um, over time, there's a lot more emphasis on quantitative data, which has to do with the statistics and all that. Now, how do you merge in, in, in presenting your findings to the team? How do you merge both the quantitative and the qualitative data in order to make those who are going to use the information make meaning of the opposition of the team in, in, in the process of building a profile and of a team. Yeah, so basically, if you are trying to show any, any quantitative analysis to uh, quant quantitative analysis to uh, a team or an individual, you would have to back it up with a uh, with a video to show as the uh, quantitative side to show to, to depict what the, the stat story is telling. Because some sometimes you, you might say or oh, you can say say to a player. Cause sometimes you know how players can be. You can say to the player, oh, "I think you're you're not working hard on this, or you're not you." you like, "Oh, are you?" So one you may start of that. Actually, you can you can show him a, a video clip of him actually performing without using his, his left foot, and then it, it can back the 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 stats up. So it's about backing it up with the with the videos or the qualitative side to 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 better better tell the story much better for for a team or a player players understanding. So more or less, it's more complementary they complement each other in in the process of giving out the information if I, I i guess that's what you're trying to communicate as in i hope i answered your, video, your question yeah Bye. so I'm, I'm i'm to get you clear having both data Hello? Uh, it's more or less yeah i can hear you oh, well i can hear you i hope you can hear me hello yeah oh, well i can hear you I can hear you very well. I hope you can hear me. Can anybody hear me? Yeah. I can hear you a while. I can. Let me uh, type it for him. Yeah. Can anybody hear me? Yeah, well, I can hear you. Yeah. Look at uh, we, we can all... the chat button. Hello. Yeah, we can hear can you. Hear, right. We can hear you. We can hear you. Yeah. Hello? Yeah, we can hear you. Hello. Arsenal looking less than a short at the back. Yeah, so while we can hear. Yes. Oh, yeah. Just midway through the first yeah, half. Can you hear me a while? Yeah, I can hear you. Now. Okay, all right, all right. So the point I was making is that, um, so from your, if I get your answer rightly, you are saying that both quantitative and qualitative complement each other. Is that what you're trying to communicate? Yeah, exactly. 
Okay. My my my, my final. Okay. My, please go ahead. Uh, you know, see, see the 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 side will, area. Will, uh, Nicolas, it depends on uh, the coaches as well. Chance, so there's like some coach who will go and will save up the qualitative side more. I will want to go the quantitative side more. I hope you get what you mean. So that's, it depends on uh, your, the right your liking, but the, in my opinion, the, the video or the qualitative side tells the story much, much better. And then it means that... Wrapped his foot around it. Okay, so my, my final question, um, in, in the process of um, building a profile of an opposition, um, uh, let's say you collect about five games of the opposition and you build a profile. Now, how, and, 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 and in situations where a key a player or two or two key players are not in the, in, in the video evidence that you've gathered, now, how do you make up for it? Because key players can spring up elements of surprises in games and, and, and change things. How do you, you know, go about all of these things? Of course, of course uh, when you know a, a team's key player, you, you wouldn't turn a blind eye on it, whether he or she is not in the team. Because you, you could probably tell from quantitative and qualitative side that Oh, hold on a second. Who is got uh, is TV or radio on? Someone, you. someone has a, a radio on or something in the background, so it's making it difficult to hear. Yeah, I'm trying to mute that, but, but can't really find who that person is. I think it's from our. I don't know whether it's a wild system. Perhaps. Oh, well, do you have a game in the background? Maybe it's. I think it's from the YouTube page, Awal. You want to turn that off? Yeah, I think it was in the video you were trying to play, no? Yeah, I'm sure there are other videos playing in the background, so you may have to check it. Arsenal carrying a real threat here on the break. It's with Tierney. It's into Okay, yeah. Sorry, guys. All right. So we are the key player. The key, I can hear you. The key player. Key players and how you make up for it in case you're unable to scout them in your video analysis. Yeah. Of course, there are other, other games that they've, they've played on and how a player plays in a, in a setup. Uh, the qualities of a player always is prevalent in how he or she plays anyway. You know what I mean? So if you've got other games to back, to back that, that, that up, then you would, you would have, rather have to resort to that because you can't turn a blind, blind eye on profiling the key players uh, going forward because you have to definitely mention about, about the key players and how they are, they are useful and how they are impacting in, in specific games. And sometimes we, we even sort to go in to check whether they are available through injuries or suspensions and all of that. So if if they are not suspended or they are not injured, then you wouldn't have to turn a blind light on that because you have to mention that because I quite remember in one of our games uh, versus Midland, um, I'm, I'm quite sure you guys know about uh, Paul Onaucho, who now is at on that gang now, he's a very very good player and he's a he's a big threat both with his feet and aerially. So whether Onwacho is in the squad or is not in the squad, you always have to like mention whether he starts or not. That's why you have to predict uh, the starting lineup to you know this is the possible lineup that they, they they probably bring up and prepare for that. Okay, so that's all for me, Chip, sir. Yeah, the one thing I want to I want to add to that, uh, well, if you don't mind, um, if you really want to do a proper analysis, though, uh, you can't just go with videos and start. Sometimes I think it requires for you to do a live analysis as well. So if you're in a position where uh, you have to travel to go see the team play live, um, I think it's very very important to do so. Uh, to do that, um, the video doesn't capture everything, you know. So even though it helps for you to start somewhere, 
Um, but at some point, you really have to do lab analysis so you can, you know, tell what a player characteristics looks like. You know, sometimes, again, the video only captures what goes on sometimes around the ball. Um, but how does the player behave when he gets provoked? You know, stuff like that. It does help and it goes into the analysis because you're looking at ways where you can uh, take advantage of the weaknesses of the team and the player. Um, so in addition to, to the video and the stats, sometimes it requires for you to do live analysis as well, if you're in a position to do that. Hope that helps. Yeah, that, that helps. And that's why it's very important that you are not more, more focused on, uh, on uh, just opposition as well. As much as you highlight your position, your team, you have to much focus more on, on how how good your team can be to be able to uh, counter the uh, like the opponent strengths. But again, advice to any analyst or team or coach is uh, most mostly broadcast broadcast videos don't show so many things. So it's always better to to have a tactical view of the tactical view of a, of a, any game because if if you want to properly analyze a, a team. And you're more, more focused, like relying on a broadcast view because there is a zoom in, zoom out, and all of that. So so many informations are missing. But when you have a tactical view, that's that doesn't stop. So it goes in all out. So you see everything. So that that uh, let's say if you're unable to travel and go see, like just like you said about this live uh, scouting live, then that uh, can can be uh, an option that you can resort to to properly see the game uh, the opposition well so it has to be a, a scouting view because that that's very wide and it doesn't zoom in and zoom out and only capture actions of players and all of that so sometimes broadcast view that doesn't you don't get all the information that you you require from views because you can uh, analyze the game on a tactical view and collect stats and i will do that with a broadcast view and then we might have different uh, numbers all together because uh I'll be missing a lot with the uh, replays. Do you get Do you get my point? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Campbell, you have a question? Yeah. Um. First of all, I'd like to say thank you, Awal, for such a great presentation. <clears throat> um, this is something I've been very interested in, and but I, I haven't really had anyone to talk to about, and so this has been very enlightening. Um, I have I have three questions actually. The first one is um, I'd like to know if um, this is something I'd like to do. Um, what what do I have to do to get into it? Do I have do I have to get an university degree? What what are the what is the procedure? What is the process? And then what are the job prospects in Ghana? That's my first question. I don't know if I should ask other the questions job. and then. Yeah, I can go one after the other because okay. I'll, I'll go with. The, of course, it comes down to your your interests, which you already have, because I started this with, with my, my passion, and then I was able to enroll on uh, the ProZoom course. I did level one, three, and also did some scouting courses. So you can look out for a sports coaching courses, but one advice that I can probably give you, which honestly, I'll be very modest and honest with you, that I'm, it's one side that I'm struggling with that I mentioned is about how, how the game is developing and progressing, you should take the coach assistant. That's very, very important because modern day analyst is not just sitting behind the computer. You would have to be a coach. So you would have to, if you can, get your coaching badges. Uh, also do short, short courses. Because most clubs would want not someone just sit behind the computer, but someone who can compliment the coach on the page and also uh, have an input during trainings and all of that. And it's one side that I'm, I'm really working on now. It's, yeah, something that I'm, I'm really working on. And I've, I've mainly resorted to being an office guy, office guy, office guy, even though I used to play and all of that. And now it's, it's in return, kind of having, uh, and, if, and I've, I've made efforts and I think it's, it's really, I'm progressing in that area and, um, I think it's one of the key areas that mo like most project clubs and everybody are really interested in now. You have to first 
first and foremost, you are not just an analyst but an assistant coach. So you have to further uh, your uh, your coaching badges or get your coaching badges, as well as doing uh, there are, there are these short short analysis courses. But if you can, there is uh, now most universities of offer analysis degrees as well. But it's it's through it's through sports coaching, and then you you the master is uh, master's to be focused in performance analysis. But there are some that offers performance analysis as well. But it's not something that really big. But it's 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 growing, and if you can, you can. I would advise that you, you get that as well. And and the aspect of performance analysis here in Ghana, I would say the market here is untapped. I can promise you that. No, because I can I can count. There are very handful of analysts here in Ghana, and myself, I've I, I've been able to like. Uh, no, I, I don't want to use the word in, but been able to introduce other guys who are which one works with uh, West Africa Football Academy now and it's 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 such a shame that only the academy like the elite academies use performance analysis uh, services here in Ghana whereas the big clubs like the Kotoko Hearts I don't know there's nothing like that over there so it's about time that uh, we make our football right and uh, introduce this because this this can give us a, a marginal gain or advantages or what opponents and resorting to killing cows and all of that for for some sort of magic <laughs> yeah okay um thank you uh, my my second question actually i think um your your one of your points might have answered it i was going to ask um if <clears throat> the the coaches um all, always i mean take on board your suggestions or there's there's some kind of tension because probably some coaches might um, i know it it, um, it works hand in hand and, but then probably some coaches might have their their way. They have their own way, their own. And so I wanted to know if there are, there are sometimes these kind of tensions um, with the coaches. And but then I think yeah. you mentioned the fact that um, getting this coach assistance then and then being also able to uh, assist yeah. on the field might probably solve that. Yeah. So you being an assistant coach helps you in sync with the coach. So you actually know, so what you are doing is basically assisting him. But when you have any input, there's no reason for you to like uh, shy away from getting your message across because um, as a team, you work as a team and football is dynamic. Every, every opinion is valid regardless. So you can, but sometimes when it goes uh, wrong, then you have to be able to take that uh, responsibility or of the consequences that happen. But then it, it creates, being an assistant creates that trust between you and, you and the coach. And wherever, when you're in sync, it's very hard for you to like be, uh, have different opinions. You get what I mean? So when you're in sync with the coach, you can easily uh, know that, okay, this is, what, uh, this is what is required of me to, to deliver. Or when you see something as opposed to what he sees, you get your message across. You don't have to, Say, oh, the coach thinks this, or I just uh, uh, rather keep quiet because it's the head coach. You just say, oh, in my opinion, I see this. I saw, I see this. I see that, and I can. Uh, I don't know why I can find this video, but I could have shown you a, a very a, a, a good example when it helped. It helped us uh, win a tournament in Japan because at halftime I was filming the game and I was like, no. And I've watched the, the game, the team's previous games, and I realized the opponents, the key players weren't like, it answers um, Kwame's uh, question. I realized the key players weren't in there. So I just ran down there and they told him, I think second half, they're going to change how they play. And it, it was actually 100%. So sometimes you don't just have to say, oh, the coach has his plan and everything. So wherever you see, that's why you are the coach's analyst. So he trusts in you as, an, uh, as part of his uh, technique. That's why he got you in. Like you are part of it. So wherever you see, you just have to get your message across. Okay, thank you. And then uh, my my last question is: I wanted to find out uh, what you, in your opinion, what do you think is um, the difference between having worked in, I mean, in Denmark and then Ghana. Um, the the difference. What's what's the main difference between these two countries in terms of um, performance analysis? So, uh, as one, uh, 
back in uh, Europe, performance analysis is well embraced as uh, more than uh, here in Ghana. Is that what the question you're trying to ask? Yes. Um, okay, fine. Probably. I just wanted to know if there's a, of course, I know um, in Ghana there is, um, there's not so much attention um, dedicated yeah. to that. But then aside that, um, I mean, uh, you, you, you uh, right to dream, you, you're actually doing analysis. And so looking at that and comparing that to Europe, are there any major differences? Um, does that make differences as in my line of work or? But the only difference between what I see in Denmark and here is here we are more focused on developing individual players and the team in our principle and our play. That's our, our, yeah, our style of play. And in Denmark, it's, it's in a competitive, competitive environment where everything works like, where you play like the under 18s play a league, the academy are all participating in, in the league system where you are not only focused on just uh, your team, but you're focused on opponent as well and also scouting opponents and all of that. So that's the main difference that I see over here where we can take that into our professional world, into the Ghana Premier League, where teams will be scouting teams, or positions and all of that, and uh, impact their performances and also help, uh, help develop our, our football, because its performance analysis is really key to, to a team's performance. All right, thank you very much, all. I think uh, Ruben has a question. Yeah. Oh, can okay, you hear me? Yeah. Oh, okay. Uh, I don't know. I don't know if he's answered it. Mine is from a player's perspective. So you, uh, I think when I got in, you were talking about like when you show a certain stats to a certain player, like, oh, maybe he didn't run or like there's a stat that shows that the kilometers he covered wasn't what you were expecting or something. I want to know yeah. when do you balance that with the strength of a player? So, like, for instance, uh, I'm going to give you a personal experience. Like, one time we were playing tempo games, right? And uh, the coach that, uh, before the training, he wanted, like, he wanted to test our, how do you call it, our fitness. But then one team was winning so much. And then the, one of our players, the, I was in the team that was winning. He, he literally that didn't have to run. He was just assistant. But then the analyst guy came and then was screaming at him like he's not running and all that. I want to know, because in, mo in most football teams, there's always this friction between players and analytics because of the stats. How are you able to yeah, balance? Yeah. Sometimes. Yeah. Exactly. How really are you able to balance that with the player so that you say, okay, yeah, that's him. You know what I mean? Or we're going to talk about it. I want to know how you balance that. Yeah, so uh, it comes down to uh, individual attributes and qualities, and every player has his uh, strengths and actually in the professional world. So that's how come uh, a team forms, a team is uh, comes together to form a team to complement each other's uh, abilities and strengths and also their weaknesses as well. So sometimes when a player uh, that doesn't run but is contributing to uh, the progress of, of the team, you probably have a, a way of uh, relaying the messages because some it comes it comes down to uh, interpersonal uh, management and how you you relate to players as well. Because then um, it, it might in your situation it might send a, a a bad signal to the player be be like oh we are winning and I'm assisting but you're screaming at me. Do you, do you yeah, get the whole point? But you well could, because the goal of the training was fitness fitness training. You understand. But then at the end of the day, he's winning. So I, I want to know how coaches or your kind of work is able to balance that because everybody was confused. Yeah. I don't know what they wanted. So is it, I don't know how, how do you guys, like you said, is it about communication in that situation that, that will make everybody happy or he, he has to keep talking about the statistics showing that he's around it? It's about, it's about, uh, every training, and I'm sure um, 
Faisal can relate to this as a coach. Every training has its purpose and what the coaches or the backroom staff uh, uh, wants from this. So back, back at FCN, what they do usually is after every morning meeting, they show just three or four clips on what they're going to work on. So that's what uh, the coach, coaches want to see. Mm. Do, do you get my... Yeah, 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 yeah. you make it sense. Okay. So it's about, more about communication and how um, planning, relaying the message to, to the players before they even get on the pitch and how you can uh, relate the message so it won't cause any sort of uh, confusion confusion uh, going for it because then it's like if I was in the shoes I'll be the same like oh, I'm assisting goals and you are telling me I'm not running my team is winning because then it's a bit conflicting so it's about trying to know how you can relate the message without it being more much more conflicting so just like you said to get the balance so people won't be like I don't know like uh, analytics is taking over or uh, you're only judging me based on my runs whereas uh, my qualities are Yes. Uh, much more prevailing. Do you get my point? I get your point. Yeah. I think you're right. You, I was going to add up to that. Um, but it still comes down to, and what you mentioned, it's the communication. It's what exactly are you looking to achieve with those stats? It's not just collecting the stats and saying you're running less or running more, but what is the objective? So if whatever it is that the player is doing is amounting to the objective, then good. If it's not, amount into the objective then that's where the problem is so yes i may not be running you know two kilometers more than the other guy but do i really have to run two kilometers maybe i don't have to you know so if you look at a full backs uh i would say kilometers would be more than maybe a center back or a center midfielder so again you have to look at uh, the player profiles and most importantly the objective, you know, is it is the person reaching the objective aligned? If yes, then good. If not, then you know that's where the problem comes in. But communication, of course, is key. So when we are sending this out to the players or the team, we have to make sure it's in line with whatever it is that we are trying to achieve, rather than just collecting stats just for the sake of it. And then one one aspect is uh, we as uh, and uh, Ruben, I'm sure you can relate to this because. Uh, you can't judge every 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 position the same because yeah. um, midfielders don't do long sprints; they do short yeah. short sprints. Works are uh, more with that. So if you want short long sprints from a midfielder, that's practically you won't get that because because of the area he covers. So he does short short sprints, whereas uh, pullbacks do the uh, long sprints and centre backs hardly do uh, long sprints. Only when they are turned over. So you can see from stats, you can see that uh, if you're judging only on sprints and long sprints, that means you're being, you're being biased to a specific position. Because then uh, attackers, attackers that play short, because you know there are different players that will want to come short rather than go be in behind uh, defensive uh, lines and all of that. Their, their sprints are always short, short, as, op- as opposed to like the wing backs and the full backs and all of that and the wingers. So sometimes you can't really uh, judge just on the, yeah, on the, on the sprints. Yeah, exactly. So yeah. You, you have to look perspective to the, the player's position as well. Yeah. My second question is, uh, you talked about our country's game not being, being on top when it comes to this kind of work. So I'm thinking, like, how, how can you help? Because obviously they know about it. But, you know, sometimes we are close-minded in the way we think in football, in Ghana. Like, they always say, is it necessary or whatever? So how can we all do, uh, put in our effort to make sure that the game is developed in that kind of sense? Because what you, what you guys are explaining right now makes so much sense, which will help our game. So it's, it's, uh, I, would say, I would say it's about education and, the, and raising awareness of, how important uh, performance analysis is, and it comes down to having the structure. So it goes way down to the roots and to the FA and all of that. And from to tell you, stories, we, we won't end yet because I was literally at the scenes that went from the beginning. 
they helped. But unfortunately, we didn't make it to the to the past the quarterfinals where we got kicked, knocked out by Mali. And you could you could tell how ignorant and how backward uh, our our game is. And it's about it's about um, in in putting this this aspect into not not only by the FA but by CAF in general because I you can go to a, a coaching coaching CAF coaching courses and there's nothing performance analysis and yeah. I'm sure most people yeah there's nothing so it's about bringing this and then educating uh, people and also it's about people reaching out to like uh, to learn and be innovative as well because then just like you said we are more close minded and we are we, we are still stuck with the old ways of of football and it's about being ready to learn being uh, innovative and embracing change that's that's it and um, going beyond just uh, saying stuff and, and doing stuff to to doing stuff rather yeah uh, I, I do know the next CAF C licenses are going to include a uh, performance analysis I've, I've seen their their new um, course material so there's performance analysis in there um, so that's that's good my final question is, uh, I think it goes to you, Faisal, as well. When you scout in the player, right, would you say that the final decision is based on instinct or is still on the stats or the analytics or whatever video you watch? Because maybe let's say you scout two players and they're very similar. And obviously, you don't know. It could go either way, right? Yeah. One could come in and not do good, and then he goes to be great somewhere. So would you say that, when you scout in a player or two, what is what what makes the final decision after you've scouted and everything is positive on on, on both players? Uh, it still comes down to live analysis. I think uh, the stats are only we use that as a starting point mm -hmm. and not a final uh, uh, decision maker here. Um, the reason why I, the stats help here is again cost effective you you can look you can travel around and look at every player that's that's almost impossible um so now if you want to look at you know let's say ruben ayana in this country we look at ruben's stats and then we compare that to kwame's stats in ghana again it doesn't mean that uh the stats showing ruben is ahead of kwame is right yeah. but then it kind of gives us an idea of where to start so uh we compare that to our in-now stats, so if we have a player in the same position that we are looking uh, for you to replace or, or compete with, we compare that to our player as well and see what, where the stats stand. Um, but to make that final decision, you really have to get out and, and, and see that player. Um, and uh, for us, that's, that's how we make the, the final decision. The stat is only, again, uh, more of a starting point than, than an end point here. Uh, Kujo, you have, you've got a question? Um, yeah, so based on what um, Awal said initially, he mentioned that the Ghanaian market for performance and analysis is untapped. And um, I, I, I will personally like to venture into that market in the future. But how are you going to present your case as a Baden performance analyst? How are you going to present your case to maybe a Division 2, Division 1, a Ghana Premier League club, how are you going to show them that they need it? How are you going to show them that? Like, how are you going to package it to them? How are you going to sell it to them? That's my main issue right now. Because, you know, um, the, the, there's some sort of culture in this country where you can't walk up and show some somebody something on a laptop screen and they'll take, it, they'll, they'll take your word for it. Yeah, absolutely. And um, one sometimes it's about, it comes down to... Uh, your passion as well, because in in our area, like in this in this environment as well, people are, are quite um, quite used to um, seeing seeing the results of what you can do. Do you get my point? The results of what you can do before they act on. Uh, so they want to see what it will benefit them. So probably because uh, honestly, I can't tell you that no most clubs here doesn't know what what the importance of analysis could be but some of them can be restricted to um to budget and also not really embracing the fact that uh, 
technology, uh, whether they, they like it or not, like analysis is part of the game and it's, it's really important uh, in, in the aspect of, uh, of the game where it gives uh, an advantage in marginal games to, to the specific team. Because I'm sure most of all is uh, team owners and everything, they watch analysis like DSTV where they see analytics live and all of that. So they should know what the importance of analysis is. But it's about you being able to, uh, to gather a, a strong presentation and also um, taking the initiative of doing something that will benefit um, that will benefit the team in the long run and they will see how important it is and probably they can they can buy into this because I quite remember um, at some point during my my time when I was injured I was doing stuff for people for free I'm not saying you go and do stuff for people for free you get it's just to show uh, people that this is really important do you get my point and I can testify to this that CK CK Akono that, when he was at Kotoko, there was this guy that approached him, uh, Kotoko, and he was helping him with analysis. And guess what? Fast forward, this boy is now the analyst of Blackstars. So you, you, you see how, how it is about um, taking that initiative to like get people interested. So it's a, it's, for now, people know what the importance is, but people try to hide behind the veil and be like, oh, uh, we don't really think this. We can do this. Perhaps, maybe you, you never know what their reason of not not embracing this. It could be fans. It could be uh, it could be just them not being uh, exposed or better enlightened about the concept. So, if you enlighten them very well and how how well you can uh, help develop this, I'm sure people will embrace this like who had who because uh, yeah, because I. I, I there's division one clubs, and if if not, it's if not for anything. If you remember, there's one key aspect of football. It's about how clubs make money, and they're interested in video highlights and everything. You can use that as a as a bait for them. You can do highlights on the sport because now, for me, I've gone past. I can go. Um, we can play a game now, and I'll get you the individual highlights right on the spot. I don't have to wait for two days or to clip everything up. So right on the spot, I do live analysis and I get, I have the individual players clips for you. Less than one hour. No, less than one hour, yeah. Right after the game, everything is ready. So if they see how important this is into player development and how you can create player highlights for them, it's all about selling players, you know what I mean? So when yeah. when they know you can give that importance to the, to the team as well, people might uh, as well embrace it today. So it's about um, well packaging this and then uh, showing them the importance and educating them about analysis. And going forward, uh, yeah, I wanted to mention this, but I've got um, these books that I bought online. I can I have a PDF copies that I can I can share with you guys, so you can fairly have a, an understanding and how you can package performance analysis and then sell it out there to to other people to further believe so you can you can have you can take inspirations from from these uh, ebooks that i bought so you can it, it will give you a, an in-depth an understanding of uh, performance analysis and probably we can link up as well and then pro uh, um, talk more when when you have uh, uh, any questions that that's bothering like you're not so clear about when it comes to performance and i'm always uh, available to like uh, to answer them but it's about it's it's about it's being able to convince like convince and educate people about the importance of analysis and it's about it's like uh, Faisal said uh, it's very good that the C licenses have a performance analysis uh, curriculum in, in that and it's the way forward honestly yeah and just to add to that uh, analysis is it's not new it's not new to the market. Um, Everyone, so, so long as you are connected to the game, whether you're a coach or even fans, when you watch the game, you're analyzing the game. Once you start sharing your, your thoughts and opinions about what's wrong and what's right, you are analyzing the game. Um, the reason why this is so important now is when you watch a game, and according to research, you can only remember about 
of whatever happens in the game. So now when you have the opportunity of video to go back and look at the game again, that helps you make your informed decision. So analysis itself is not new. It's been in the market, again, since uh, we started playing football. That's coaches, you analyze the game. When you're you know, coaching on a game day, you're analyzing the game. Um, except that in, in this scenario, you have an, an opportunity to look at the game from a different angle. Because uh, sometimes you may stand on the sidelines, what you see you think is right. You go back and you watch the tapes and you can realize, no, I'm, I'm completely wrong. So it just gives you an opportunity to review uh, whatever uh, uh, went on in the game. And then again, you know, you can have more information to, to make your final decision. So it's not something new at all. It's just uh, people are just going to pay. People are now paying attention to, to what performance analysis is. Um, but uh, okay, look, just just a quick um, Faisal, you mentioned that the new CAFC course includes performance analysis. Uh, when would that be rolled out? Um, it, uh, like, yeah. I, I wish I can tell you, but uh, <laughs> I've not been told to release that information. So I would say okay, that's fine. That's fine. be on the lookout. Um, I was just fortunate to have some inside information, but uh, uh, I, I don't want to get myself into trouble. <laughs> and 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 a while quickly. So, uh, outside of this um, presentation, how 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 will those of us who want to follow up with you, how will we contact you? Yep, I was going to be the last one. Yeah. So, uh, anybody can contact you, a while. Yeah, um, I can roll out my number and email here. Okay, you can Sorry. just type in the in the chat. You uh, can type it right. But under yeah. yeah. Okay, and just a quick, um, just a quick thank you to you guys for just sharing your knowledge to guys like us who, who want to start something in the game. Just, just by the way. No, no, no. Okay, thank so, you for, for taking the time to. Well, you can, uh, can reach out on this uh, number, and I can drop. I can drop. Or I can send the materials to Faisal, and then he can send it out uh, through your emails uh, yeah. if that's how uh, yeah, you want it. it. And and I can. I want to just show you one the, the clip that I spoke about. You can you can see it very quick, so you can know how this uh, sure. how halftime analysis can also impact in in games. Uh, yeah, obviously they, they, in the first half they played a, a different style to the second half. Uh, they were a lot more defensive, a lot more in their own half in the first half, and then in the second half uh, they've came out and, and totally changed their, their style, changed personnel as well, and it, it actually helped us. I felt because uh, it actually opened the game more. They were more attacking. They tried to play the game more in our half, and it actually helped us in, uh, in the game because it gave us more room to go and play. Uh, and also credit to our analysis, uh, who's with us. He's done a lot of work. Uh, on the games and he actually said that to me at half time that he thinks that they'll change in the second half and he was 100% right yeah, sure. so yeah you can see how important sometimes so we've gone past the age of uh, doing just post much to like live analysis and all of that and you can see how important this can be uh, in game situations as well so it's about it's about us uh, uh, embracing change and also not like embracing change as in something new, but like in in our environment, trying to uh, keep up with uh, what's what's out there and also innovate our game. So that's uh... all right. Great stuff. I think at some point we would have to bring you back, and then now we can talk about you know live game analysis, um, rather than post game. So uh, we'll find some time, but, uh, thank you very much a while for, for your time and guys, thank you for attending. I know, uh, you're asking a lot from you guys. It's not cheap. Obviously you have to spend some, spend some money to, to join us here. So we appreciate the time. Uh, thanks for joining us. Um, I can say right now we've just confirmed, uh, Didi Dramani, who's going to be our next presenter, uh, on July 7th. I think that's going to be a very, very good one. Um, he's going to talk about talent, you know, what is talent? So he's got, I know he's a man that uh, very passionate about his work and, and that should be a good one as well. So I'll pass on the information as usual. And again, thanks. Thanks for joining us. Thank you, Paisa. Thank you, Awal. Thank mm -hmm. you for a great job.
All right. Enjoy your evening. Thank you very much. And well, it's been good being thank here. You. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.